Hello, I'm Smithers, and welcome to my King K. Rule Guide. This guide aims to aid those who wish to know how to play this character, and or those who simply wish to know how to beat the King of the Kremlings. To do this, this guide explains as much about the character as possible in a digestible format. Before going any further, I would like to make a quick side note. Since there's actually a lot of tech to this character, as weird as that sounds, I feel that in order to keep the flow of this guide consistent, a separate video explaining the execution as well as the utility of King K. Rool's more advanced techniques will be more fitting. This means that the guide will only cover the surface of what this character has to offer in that regard. An in-depth guide to the character's more execution-heavy techniques will be made in the near future, so sit tight for a bit, unless you're of course watching this in the future, it's already been made, and in which case the video will be linked in the iCard right around this time, as well as later on during the character specific tech section. The topics or sections I'll be covering in this King K. Rool guide are a basic overview of the character, his attributes, moveset, offensive capabilities, which encompasses the character's combos, mix ups, and kill confirms, with later sections encapsulating King K. Rool's neutral, advantage, Disadvantage, the character specific tech of King K. Rule, the weaknesses and design flaws of the character with possible fixes for the flaws, and an overall consensus of the character with a matchup chart, moveset, stages, and overall tier list placement. This guy took a long time to make, so I hope you all enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get started. King K. Rool can be best described as a utility powerhouse. This archetype is defined by a conglomeration of three archetypes. A trapper, a zoner, and a turtler. King K. Rool is defined by these through his ability to force different kinds of approaches while claiming space with his massive hitboxes and projectiles, hold his position with armored moves and great anti-airs, as well as keeping his opponent or opponents on edge with the scary kill power and setups. Let's start by looking at his attributes to start painting a picture of how exactly this character is played and can be beaten. Kinky Rool has the 15th lowest walk speed, the 12th lowest run speed, a tight placing for the 37th through 41st highest dash speed, the 19th lowest air speed, and a tight placing for the 10th through 21st lowest air acceleration. Remember when I mentioned that King K. Rool is more suited for turtling? His low mobility values enforces the need to have the opponent come to you, since his lack of speed in his base stats makes it so he cannot approach as well as other characters. King K. Rool also has a tight placing for the 25th through 27th highest regular falling speed, and a tight placing for the 25th through 27th highest fast falling speed. Due to King K. Rool having such high values for vertical momentum, it both helps and hurts him. This is the case since it makes it so King K. Rool is great at continuing pressure after successfully exchanging in the air, but also makes him more susceptible to being juggled as a result. This is one of the main reasons why he's good at anti-airing and weak to being juggled. King K. Rool is also the second heaviest fighter in the game. As a result of this value, King K. Rool is even more susceptible to being juggled but he also gains a high level of sustainability. This is especially true due to King Kiro having armor to work with in conjunction with his weight. More on that later. Both enable him to live for quite a while and take more effort than usual for their opponent to then set up King Kiro for a ledge trap or edge guard situation. This means that those that do not have an adept punish game or even make a mistake along the way can find themselves struggling against this character as they will likely not out damage or even get the situation reversed when facing a good King K. Rool player. Now let's cover his belly armor. King K. Rool's belly armor is an attribute that is unique to this character in that it is health based rather than it being beaten by exceeding a certain percent or knockback threshold. The armor itself is only active on specific moves for a specific amount of time, moreover this in the moveset breakdown, negates all knockback, but still forces King K. Rool into hit lag. The armor itself has a total health of 18.01 hit points, with it splitting the damage between King K. Rool and itself. Due to this quality, the armor can be seen as effectively having 36.02 hit points. The armor also regenerates at a rate of 0.3 hit points per second, with it taking a total of 53.37 seconds to fully heal. 
Due to the regeneration rate and the net health of the belly armor being the way that they are, it makes it so using the armor defensively is the better option. This only further cements the aforementioned archetypes of King K. Rule, with a paying mind to the turtler part of the utility powerhouse. An important thing to remember about King K. Rule's belly armor is if the armor is hit by too much damage, either by a move that breaks in in one hit or several successive hits that overwhelm the net health slash regeneration rate of the armor, King K. Rule will be sent into a similar state to that of a shield break, with the armor being fully replenished immediately after no longer being dazed. One thing to note about the armor is that if an attack hits King K. Rool while performing an armored move that is not on his belly, he will suffer full damage and sustain knockback as if he was not performing an armored move in the first place. Next, let's look at the King of the Kremlings moveset. One thing that I would like to note before starting this section is that not all of the frame data of King K. Rool will be discussed here, but a lot of the important information will be. If you are still inclined to look into King K. Rool's frame data, I recommend looking at UniversalFrameData.com for more information. Anyway, back to the video. First, let's start with his normals. King K. Rool's normals are best served as get off me options, combo finishers, or his anti airs. Starting off with King K. Rool's jab, it is his fastest normal, and the move's best utility is under the previously mentioned get off me and combo finisher categories. The move can also be used to reset opponents for the widest percent window out of his entire kit. Next, let's look at his up tilt. The move has forearm intangibility from frames 4 through 9, making it able to beat out a lot of moves from both its disjoint and raw speed. Do not let these stats convince you of it being his best normal despite it having the most utility on paper. The fact of the matter is that it is outclassed by almost every other normal, depending on the situation he has at his disposal. Up tilt has the same amount of safety and shield as the last hit of a jab, is slower than jab, does less total damage than jab, is less safe and less rewarding than using up and go forward tilt, due to forward tilt having more range as well as better shield safety, in addition to Kinky Roll getting armor on the same frame when the up tilt hitbox comes out. There is also the fact that up tilt sees out stocks later than forward tilt. So with these facts in mind, the actual best way to use this move is in the previously mentioned areas but only when Kinky Rope is low on health for his belly armor. Speaking of forward tilt, let's cover that move next. The move is basically a better version of up tilt in every way. This also means that it can be used as an anti-air, get off me option, and a combo finisher. Due to the move also being able to be angled, forward tilt can hit opponents on the side platforms of small battlefield, battlefield, and lilat when angled up, as well as being able to both two frame and hit all ledge hangs in the game when angled down. With all of these attributes put together, forward tilt is undoubtedly King K. Rule's best grounded option. For his final tilt attack, he wields a commonly dreaded berry. The berry itself has the longest duration in the game, with it not having any reliable means of comboing into it. Most of the time, it is better to go for anything else. Some more things to note about the splash hitbox is that it can hit both grounded and airborne opponents, hit below the ledge, as well as have more range than forward tilt. Because of these attributes, the move can be used as a safer but less rewarding two-framing option than forward tilt, or as a setup or a more guaranteed hefty punish. With all of these attributes put together, Down Tilt's main use can be determined to be a setup tool and or hard read tool. This is mainly due to it being his slowest normal but faster than all of his smash attacks with the berry easily setting up into some nasty punishes as well as down air and forward tilt outclassing it in the risk reward department of on stage 2 framing options. The last normal for Kinky Rule is his dash attack. An interesting quality to note about this move is that dash attack's knockback scales harsher and deals more damage than forward tilt. This makes it so that it is best to use this move as a combo finisher and or kill option in place when forward tilt is applicable. Next, let's look at his smash attacks. King Roll smash attacks, in general, mainly serve as combo finishers and or hard read punishes. Starting off strong, we have the strongest smash attack, forward smash. The move can be angled up or down for more damage, and be confirmed in two. This all sounds good at a glance, but do not let these facts distort your vision, for it is another case like up tilt. 
The problem with this move is that it is outclassed by his other smash attacks. They have armor, more reliable windows that allow them to be confirmed into, and that the smash's hitboxes linger longer. This means that the move is only better to be used after landing a down tilt from a reed of some kind. Oh yeah, did I mention that since the hitbox of the move is kinda small such that some characters can just crouch under it, sometimes even when angled down? Yeah, word of advice, don't use forward smash unless you manage to land a confirm or read a risky option from your opponent. Now it's to King K. Rool's second strongest smash attack, down smash. An important thing to remember about this move is that the strong hit can hit both grounded and airborne opponents, but the splash hitbox can only hit grounded opponents. Some unique properties of this move is that the shifting of King K. Rool's body makes it so it can flat out dodge attacks, and can be confirmed into in some platform stages, and the move can also two frame. This low hitting attribute of the move, however, is more commonly used to challenge aggressive double jumps from ledge. This is mainly due to the sheer difficulty of two framing with the move, making it so every other object King K. Rool has to accomplish this goal more reliable. The difficulty comes from the move's large amount of startup and that there are only two frames where the strong hit can connect. With all of this put together, Kinky Rose Down Smash is best used as a kill confirm option after down air through a platform or when raiding an aggressive double jump from ledge. Up Smash is Kinky Rose's most interesting smash attack, with it having a spike hitbox for some reason. This spike is only active for one frame, and it's very weak. Don't go for it, trust me. You'll never land it. The main use of this move is to either punish unsafe rising aerials on shield, as an anti-air, as a finisher from a few setups, or as a niche option to escape shield pressure via speed and armor. Since the move also shifts King K rule so abruptly, the move can sometimes be used as a means to dodge some attacks. This is mainly applicable to grabs, namely tomahawk grabs, but this use is typically outclassed by jab or some other anti-air in most situations since the hurtbox shifting doesn't start until frame 6, making rising Nair out of a shield faster, is not applicable to more range grabs, and that the falling hitbox deals less total damage than jab. Up smash is best used as either a mash read after a down throw, a situational anti-air, as well as a confirm option after an on-stage down air. Now let's cover his grabs and throws. The main uses for these are to rack on damage, provide positional advantage, put the opponent in a nasty spot, or straight up kill. First, let's look at his grab. This type of grab is mainly going to be used to push one's advantage, or as a mix up out of shield option. This is mainly due to the move having a lot of end lag and that it is not that fast, making it a very punishable option if anticipated. Moving on to the King of the Kremlin's next grab, we have Dash Grab. Despite it being his most stubby grab, it has the most combo potential out of all of his grabs. This is mainly due to the rest of King K. Rool's kit having a high level of base knockback, making the lunge, especially in combination with a roll boosted dash grab, very useful for following up into this move. The move also has more end lag than any of his other grabs, making it one of his most punishable moves on whiff. With all of these facts put together, dash grab is best used as a more optimally damaging follow up option when dash, attack, or forward tilt is applicable. His last grab, Pivot Grab, is by far his best grab to use in neutral. The move comes out on frame 12 and has, well, an absurd amount of range. So much range in fact that it can straight up outrange some sword character's moves. One notable sword move that can be outranged is Krom's Jab. This makes it so learning how to perform dash cancel pivot grabs is a must for any King K. Rool player since not only is pivot grab large, but King K. Rool's throws are also pretty good overall. Speaking of throws, it is about time we look at these bad boys. Let's begin with forward throw. Forward throw is King K. Rool's fastest but overall lowest rewarding throw. With it only consistently providing follow-ups at low percentages, trying to go for anything beyond that only reliably provides positional advantage. However, forward throw can sometimes lead to follow-ups after successfully executing a DI mix-up or when reading what the opponent does after being thrown until around mid-percentages. Most of the time, however, one is better off going for K. Rool's other throws when the opponent is no longer at low percentages. King K. Rool's up throw is his most damaging throw with it dealing 19.2% base. 
It also puts the opponent in a position where they have to anticipate something due to all of King K. Rool's potential follow-ups being unreactable. This is only true until a bit after mid-percentages, where the opponent has a large enough window to react to whatever the King K. Rool player is going for. One thing to note about this attribute is that jumping away gets out of all potential follow-ups, but this option still provides the K. Rool player with positional advantage and the potential to follow up after the hit given the correct read. Up throw can kill, but it can only meaningfully accomplish this on the top platform of triplet stages like Battlefield or Yoshi's. The next throw to cover is King K. Rool's back throw. The move has a nasty launch angle and good knockback which makes it his best kill and positional throw. The angle itself being so extreme makes gimping and or edge guarding with King K. Rool an easy 1-2 and done. This throw does not accomplish much of anything beyond these uses, but what it does do, it does well. Oh look, another berry! King K. Rool's down throw is by far his most overrated throw, but with good reason to boot. The throw in question is by far his best throw as it provides the most potential follow-ups out of all of his throws. As previously stated, the move buries the opponent with it serving as a strong mix-up tool in his kit. One thing to note about this throw is that there are no guaranteed follow-ups until around 125%, so if you find yourself getting hit a lot before this percent window, you are either not mixing up your mashing enough, or your mashing ability is in need of some improvement. Moving on from his throws, let's now look at King K. Rool's aerials. As a general rule to follow with these moves, they serve as combo starters, kill options, zoning, and or anti airing options. These will likely be the most used moves out of his entire kit, so don't feel bad about throwing these suckers out. Let us begin with arguably the best move in King K. Rool's kit, Neutral Air. This move has such a high reputation due to it being able to be used, well, basically anywhere. One can use it as a combo starter, combo finisher, landing option, out of shield option, ledge trapping tool, edge guarding tool, anti airing tool, shield pressuring tool, and simply as a kill option. There is, however, something that holds this move back, and it is the fact that it makes use of Kinky Rule's belly armor mechanic. As backwards as it may sound, it turns out that it makes it so using the move constantly isn't a good option. This is solely due to it putting Kinky Rule at risk of having his belly armor broken. With all of these attributes put together, the best uses for this move are as a combo starter, with it then being mixed in with everything else to mix up one's game plan. Let's now look at another great move of King K. Rule's, Forward Air. This move's traits enables it to be used in a variety of ways, albeit less than what Neutral Air can be used in. The move itself can be used as a combo starter, combo finisher, poking tool, more specifically a neutral, an anti-air, an edge guarding tool, ledge trapping tool, shield pressuring tool, and as a kill option. With all of these uses in mind, this aerial is essentially, a move that can be seen as a more rewarding but riskier slash more specialized neutral air. This means that this move is generally best used in place of neutral air when the kinky row player is certain that the attack will connect, as a more reliable poking option in neutral, as a better combo starter at earlier percents, or when the belly armor has sustained so much damage where using neutral air is more of a risk to use than that of forward air. Continuing on to his next aerial, we have his back air. It's the hard knock. This move hits like a truck and is fairly safe with it being minus 9 on shield. The move also spikes, but only in airborne opponents. Back air can be used as a combo starter, kill option, edge guarding tool, ledge trapping tool, two framing option, or as a shield pressuring tool. This move can also shield poke given the opponent's shield has suffered about a quarter of its health. After accounting for everything this move has to offer, the best uses for this move are as either a safer shield poking slash pressuring option on characters with quick but stubby options, due to Forder's landing animation being closer to the opponent, allowing the previously mentioned out of shield options to hit King K roll, or as a hard punish for overextensions and or callouts on roll ins. Next on the list of aerials, we have his up air. Up air is the second heftiest hitting aerial of King K. Rool, with it also having some strange properties. One of these properties is that it sends King K. Rool slightly upward upon use. 
Some other things to keep in mind about this move are that it has a lengthy amount of end lag and that the move does not give Kinky Roll any height if thrown out immediately out of hit stun. This move is best used as a stalling tool when sent off stage, kill option after a down air, or as a read after calling out an aerial overextension, or as a niche landing mix up after being put into a juggle situation via utilizing its lack of ability to give height immediately out of hit stun. Time to cover his last aerial, down air. The move spikes both grounded and airborne opponents, with it being able to be used in a plethora of departments. Such uses include a combo starter, kill option, a two framing option, or as a niche landing option due to the move being only minus nine on shield, and that it has armor on it. The best uses for this move are as a combo starter, or as his most reliable two framing option on stage, due to its long-lasting hitbox. The last moves I'll be talked about are King K. Rule's special moves. All of his specials serve as a different use with little, if any, overlap between them. The one main thing to remember with these moves is that they are really polarizing when used, so planning ahead is key to making effective use out of them. Let us begin this section with a breakdown of his Nutra special, Blunderbuss. Its command grab can be held for 120 frames, has a win box that pulls opponents in during the entirety of the command grab's active frames, and K. Rule can drop through platforms during any frame of the move's animation. This dropping through platform ability will be talked about more over in the character specific tech section, so sit tight, or skip ahead, for a detailed use of this technique. There is also a reshot ability when the opponent or the shot itself is inhaled by the blunderbuss. The reshot comes out 35 frames after the shot or opponent is captured, with it being able to be angled in three different directions, a 45 degree angle forward, a 45 degree angle behind, and straight up. The forward facing reshot has a much better scaling of knockback than the other two, so this variant is often the preferred angle for both KOing and for setting up edgeguard slash ledge trap situations. This angle is also used for claiming space with the reshot of the shot itself when the opponent is first sent off stage with the initial shot of the blunderbuss. Blunderbuss is typically used as either a camping tool or zoning tool, with it being used as a edgeguarding or ledge trapping tool whenever possible. There are also times when this move is used as a mix-up to either throw off the timing of the opponent or to take advantage of the move's large amount of active frames, as a comboing tool in some scenarios, or as an effective kill option, particularly when light striking. With all of Blunderbuzz's traits and applications put together, the best uses for this move are as a zoning option or as a ledge trapping tool, especially when platforms are available to work with. Next on the list of specials, we have King K. Rool's side special, Cranorang. This move is critically acclaimed by many a King K. Rool player, and with good reason to boot. The crown itself is a transcendent projectile, so it can beat out or pass through every projectile slash move in the game. Upon passing through a move, however, the then active hitbox gets nullified, with only the returning hit having the possibility of connecting. That is, if the returning hitbox is not also planked with. Crinring also has super armor starting on frame 6 and lasts until the animation of the toss ends. The amount of armor is 12%, and it does scale with the 1v1 multiplier. One thing to note about the armor is that it is inconsistent. There are many instances where this move is beaten, where other percent based armor moves do not. The issue appears when multiple hits are at play. One running theory is that it appears the damage is cumulative, so dealing more than 12% as K rolls in the animation for Crown Rang would break it. As it turns out though, there is an issue with this idea, and it will be elaborated on in the weaknesses and design flaws section. Another thing to remember with this move is that if King K. Rule loses his crown, the crown becomes a pick item by the opponent. King K. Rule will also be able to perform turnaround specials, view reverses, and wave bounces via the fail toss animation. If the crown falls into the blast zone, it will respawn a second and a half later, about two units away, to the left or right of King K. Rule. This spawning of the crown can be manipulated slightly, in that if one is at the edge of the stage, the crown will always spawn towards the center of the stage. This only works if Kinky Rule is on stage when the crown spawns, so hanging at the ledge as it spawns has the crown spawn on either side of him, and sometimes inside the stage. 
Moving on to the uses of this move, Crown Ring can be used as a zoning option, comboing tool, zoning tool, niche landing or get off me option, and as a movement tool. Yes, you heard me right. There are multiple character specific techniques surrounding this move that enable King K. Rool to alter his momentum, and I'm not talking about V reverses. The techniques that I'm referring to are called Crown Sliding, Crown Bouncing, and Double Crown Bouncing. So with everything this move has to offer, Crown Ring is best used as a zoning option, a zone breaking option, mix up when getting off the ledge, comboing tool, and that it is his best movement mix up move due to its sheer amount of options and that the toss of the move has armor on it. Up next we have King K. Rool's down special, Gut Check. The move will only activate if a projectile or an attack hits King K. Rool's belly with the rest of his body being vulnerable to attacks when he's not invincible. Gut Check is both a counter and a reflector in one, but with an added twist. What I mean by this is that this move has some unique properties that make it stand out among the other counters in the game. Such properties include that it can be manually reversed upon activation, the move has a hitbox after reflecting a projectile, and that Gut Check always deals at least 12% damage regardless of the strength of the attack that triggers the move. King K. Rool's Down Special also halts its momentum for a bit, though this attribute is not unique. So when looking at this move's properties, it can be concluded that Gut Check can be used as a stalling tool offstage, a zone breaking tool, a hard read option that can completely reverse situations, and or as an escape option due to the move's sheer speed. Sure, the move can be used against characters that have hitboxes and their recovery moves, but this use is almost always outclassed by either Nair or Dare, due to them being more reliable and sometimes dishing up more rewarding punishes than that of Gut Check. All in all, Gut Check is a pretty situational move with it only consistently serving as Kinky Rule's fastest escape option. This is solely due to there being an extreme amount of end lag and thus it being very committal to use. Onto his last special move, we have Kinky Rule's up special. Due to the move being disjointed in that King K. Rool's ledge grab hitbox is so small when activating the move, it is common for the move to poke through the ledge of every stage. When this happens, it is possible to combo off of it or set up tech chase situations on nearby platforms. If the hitbox is not shielded, of course. The move is also unable to be turnaround special, V reversed, wave bounced, or halted by other moves that would otherwise do so, such as counters. This does not make it immune to slowdowns, however, or if the hitboxes themselves are just so big that the immunity to being halted just does not matter. Another thing about Propeller Pack's hitbox is that due to its size and location, it can be beaten out by moves that shift a character's body very quickly, or disjoint enough moves from above as well as easily being punished from the side. Overall, this move is mainly going to be used as King K. Rool's main recovery tool, typically from as low as possible, and sometimes as a cheesy kill option after a read of someone's landing option. That is, unless the K. Rool is facing off against the snake. Getting kills with a propeller pack in this matchup in particular is actually fairly easy, believe it or not, especially if they like recovering high, which snake players typically do. So if you are a snake player and you find yourself playing against a K. Rool player, Get ready to pray that they don't know this trick. Man, that was a lot of information, huh? Stay with me now, because we are just now getting into the meat of the character, with a showcase of King Kiro's combos, mix-ups, and kill confirms coming up next. Keep in mind that the percent ranges for these are labeled in 25% increments, with them being roughly when a combo window or some other window exists. This also means that the windows for such aggression ultimately vary by character, so do not use this as an absolute guide for his offensive capabilities. All preceding footage has Mario used as a base due to him having average stats in every one of his base stats. With that being said, let the montage begin.
Guys, this is what dying feels like. Gonna catch me riding dirty. <laughs> Now that you know a hefty amount of what this character can do to the opponent, it's time to cover how King K. Rool is played in a match. In general, K. Rool wants to wall out the opponent while slowly claiming stage, press at his advantage after landing a hit, and then maintain advantage via denying an escape with his large moves, armor, and projectiles. He will also make an adequate use of mix-ups since K. Rool gets large punishes off of calling out the opponent's flow charting. This means being able to gauge what the opponent is ready for, and or what they are likely to do, is key to making the most out of King K. Rool's tricky and stress-inducing game plan. Let's begin with his neutral. In neutral, King K. Rool typically wants to deny space and use the opponent's preferences to get around the then wall to either gain stage control and or extend off of a stray hit. The most common tool used to do this is Blunderbuss, typically in conjunction with a full hop. The main use of performing a full hop Blunderbuss is to deny aerial approaches since most characters' combos and their extensions start with a landing aerial of some kind. This means that this move limits a lot of characters to either double jump, and thus putting themselves at risk of King K. Rool's strong anti-air game, or go low and attain minimal reward at best for guessing right while running headfirst into King K. Rool's fast, strong, and or lengthily active moves. Due to King K. Rool's neutral special's large amount of active frames, that the projectile moves slowly, and that it can limit the opponent's reward the most, makes Blunderbuss his best tool in neutral. One thing to remember is that it is not wise to prioritize the move as a means to rack up damage, since the Kremlin Monarch gets most of his damage from his normals. So if anything, one could use it as a means to set up other moves, either from a direct combo, or from forcing the opponent to approach a certain way. As a result of Blunderbuss's shortcomings, Kinky Rule's other options in this game state are more preferable for follow-ups. Speaking of which, Kinky Rule's Fair is his best neutral tool for that very purpose. 
It has a large amount of range, can be used to set up a lot of combos off of it, as well as the move having a good amount of safety on block. The thing that differentiates the two mentioned options is when to use one tool over the other in neutral. What decides this is mainly determined by how far away the opponent is from K rule. Following this train of thought, it can be concluded that at mid-range, Fair is preferable, while at farther ranges, Blender Bus is preferable. One may think that Crown Ring can be used in the same department as Blender Bus, which it can, but it is far too risky to integrate as haphazardly without the use of wave bouncing. It is not as reliable of a tool due to the move's immense amount of startup and end lag. Without wave bounce of the Crown Ring, it is possible for the opponent to react and punish Crown Ring on startup alone, which can be done by the majority of the cast. The move also needs to be tossed at near max range to ensure that few of any characters can punish the usage of Crown Ring. So, in order to use this move safely and thus not risking heavily losing neutral, giving up stage control is needed, which Kiro typically doesn't want to do. This may seem to put the move in a bad light, but if Crown Ring has managed to be integrated well by the listed recommendations, it can be used with minimal risk and yield high reward in neutral thanks to the plethora amount of follow-ups that it provides. There is also the fact that the preferred spacing just so happens to be the point where both hits can connect on a blocking opponent. This only further minimizes the ability of the opponent to retaliate on reaction, with the majority of the cast only able to reliably land a grab, if anything. So, as a general synopsis for Crownerang in neutral, correct callouts with Crownerang is key to making effective use out of it, with it being well worth the risk if used cleverly. Integration of Nair, F Tilt, and Pivot Grab in neutral aren't bad ideas either, due to their safety, ability to hold center stage slash snuff out approaches, thanks to their armor or size, and their push advantage when center stage is attained. One thing to remember about Kairos Neutral is if the opponent has anything on the spectrum of a reflector, Fair will take priority with Blunderbuss slash Krennering taking a back seat. This is especially true if the reflector speeds up the projectile, with Kairos' slow base stats not allowing him to maneuver around them without risking losing his oh so important positioning. Gut check does help sometimes, but due to its high level of commitment, the move is only reliably usable as a mix up option with jumping and shielding being more reliable at the expense of the aforementioned invaluable positioning. Let's talk about the leader of the Kremlin's advantage state. King K. Rool's advantage state is played similarly to his neutral, where he wants to limit the abilities of the opponent and are out prioritize aggressive attempts from the opponent to escape their disadvantage, thanks to all of his large and or armored moves. This means that the goal is to make the opponent feel trapped, even when they actually aren't. Upon entering the ledge trapping phase, King K. Rool wants to set up one of his many ways of keeping the opponent off stage, the most common and cost effective of which is with his neutral special, Blunderbuss. With the aid of a platform, Blunderbuss can be used to cover every get-up option, with it being a 50-50 guess and if it will work. This is all thanks to Blunderbuss's ability to drift in the air during the entirety of the command grab's duration. Drifting forward covers neutral get-up, jump, and drop-down double jumps. Drifting back can cover rolls and get-up attacks. The only consistent way of beating out this is stalling out the ledge and waiting out the Blunderbuss. This does, however, allow K. Rool to then incorporate a plethora of mix-ups, thanks to Blunderbuss's ability to be delayed in its suction, and that one can drop through a platform during any frame of the move's animation. Integration of mixing up between timings, baiting the opponent to choose an option, and making use of King K. Rool's several options that can hit an opponent at the ledge are crucial for higher levels of play, since the opponent will be forced into a guessing game which can either lead to more damage or even lead to the opponent's demise. With these tools at his disposal, getting off the ledge can be made a daunting task by the opponent, via them not being able to react to what the croc is up to. This isn't even all the King of the Kremlin has at his disposal. The next tool that needs mentioning is King K. Rool's Nair. Nair is a fast armored long-lasting move, as you may have heard, 
that can be used to cover every getup option like Blunderbuss. The only reason to use Nair over Blunderbuss is if there isn't enough time to set up the ledge trap with Blunderbuss, or if there are no platforms to utilize, thus making Nair a more reliable tool for covering ledge options. The reason Blunderbuss is preferable whenever possible is due to Nair being a less consistent and rewarding tool with higher levels of commitment needed to cover every option. There is also less knockback, and by extension time, that can be used to reset the situation and or capitalize on an edge guard situation. To use Nair, it is best to react upon the motion of the then latching opponent, and then immediately either performing a short hop fastball Nair, while staying at the ledge or drifting back with it, without a fastball, to cover a roll in. There is also the caveat of the armor's health to worry about, so if the armor is low, the integration of space landing fares is the way to go. Fares are better used in combination with platforms, since it can be used similarly to Blunderbuss. This is possible with, again, altering air drift and reacting to the motion of the ledge hanging opponent being utilized for more optimal coverage. Next on the advantage substates, we have edge guarding. Kinky Rule's go to's in this state are Nair, Dare, Blunderbuss, and Fair. Again, K. Roll wants to force the opponent to choose a specific route with Blunderbuss, full up or not, to then enable him to more easily land his committal but deadly aerials. Nair is his best option with it being especially good if there isn't time to set up a shot from Blunderbuss. This is most evident due to the move's long amount of active frames, the animation takes the least amount of time to complete, and that it has armor to beat out any and all attempts at reversals. In the event that one isn't feeling confident about the opponent's recovery, however, either going for an on-stage dare or setting up for a ledge trap would be more preferable. Speaking of dare, dare is a great option when edge guarding thanks to his long-lasting hitbox and that it consistently hits below the ledge, making two frame with the move very easy. Do keep in mind that it's not that disjointed, so recovery options that have a hitbox can sometimes beat out the attempt if it is either not traded or armored. This is especially true if the recovery options hitbox hits very high above the opponent. The last advantage substate that is worth giving its own breakdown is juggling. King K. Rule doesn't have that strong of a juggle game despite him having a lot of strong anti-earing options. This is mainly due to a lot of them not setting up combos or that favorable of situations that could lead to follow-ups. There are, however, strong punishes that set up the opponent onto platforms or tech chase situations. Such options include Nair, Fair, Frannering, Blunderbuss, Dare, Bear, and Forward Throw. This does go without saying that even with so many options to perform such a setup, there are only a few that can be used to reliably do so. There is also the fact that most of the tools that do put the opponent onto a platform only do so in the event that the opponent DIs in and if they choose to not expend a double jump. After some consideration, it can be concluded that King K. Rool's preferred option when setting the opponent into a juggle situation is to either send them horizontally as to then take advantage of his far better ledge trapping and edge guarding capabilities, or finish them off with his hefty hitting anti airs. <laughs> now it's time to cover King K. Rule's disadvantage state. King K. Rule's disadvantage centralizes on minimizing the amount of time he is in this state by either beating out attempts at extensions, via out prioritizing them, and or weaving out of harm's way thanks to his risky but plethora options to do so. Depending on the substate, and of course matchup, one may need to make more use or less use of some techniques. First on the list of disadvantageous substates, we have ledge trapping. Kinky Rule has an above average means of escaping from ledge pressure, with his ability to use the typical options in addition to some strong options of his own. Such options mainly revolve around executing a double jump from ledge to either perform a fair, nair, crinering, or up air. All of these options have the ability to beat out the opponent's attempts at maintaining advantage via their ability to outprioritize other characters' moves. Kinky Ruo can utilize Wavebounce Blunderbuss or Wavebounce Krinorang after jumping from a ledge, 
to retreat off stage, and thus making the moves and like less of a detriment, with the ability to either perform a double jump aerial back on stage, or simply air dodging back to ledge. With everything Kinky Roll has in escaping from the ledge, it can be determined that this is his least worrisome disadvantageous position. Do keep in mind that even if King K. Rule has strong options at escaping from the ledge, there is always counterplay that can be done, so varying up how one gets back on stage is key to making the most out of King K. Rule's strong reversal tools at the ledge. Time to cover how to deal with edge guard attempts on King K. Rule. There are a few options he has at accomplishing this without prioritizing the attempt, by stalling out the attempt, by varying the timing of the Krennin's recovery, or by going for his limited and sometimes risky recovery route mix-ups. Snuffing out attempts can be done with his Nair, Fair, Cranorang, Gut Check, and Blunderbuss. All of these are very committed to go for, thanks to all of the option's large amount of end lag. As a result of this, being able to judge how and when the opponent is going to try and press K. Rool farther offstage is key to making effective use out of these options. Stalling off stage can be accomplished with the integration of up air and gut check thanks to their vertical momentum alteration properties, but as previously stated, they are very committal to go for and thus should be used with caution. The timings of King Kiro's recovery is fairly limited in scope with it only being able to be varied on the timing of when the ascent of up special is executed. During the use of fast falls, Two juke out attempts and or baited attempts at edge guards is the best option typically. One thing to remember is that characters that are able to go super deep off stage or ones with very large two fairing options are just able to ignore these mix ups and thus allow them to either chase him or just catch him during the ascent. In regards to recovery rat mix ups, I have yet to mention the only ones he has are to air dodge to ledge up airing on stage to the sort of hop that it provides, or by propeller packing high and landing on stage a nearby platform, or just to juke out an attempt at being edge guarded to then grab the ledge. All of these are okay at best and are generally limited by King Cable's low airspeed, making them very telegraphic when he's going for them. If you couldn't already tell, this is by far his worst position to be in. Clever use out of the listed techniques is a minimum to get around any clever opponent's attempts at edge guarding King K. Rule. Now time to cover how to land with King K. Rule. Just Nair. <laughs> but in all seriousness, King K. Rule does have a decent time landing with a plethora of options to do so. Such options include, well, Nair, Double Jump, Air Dodge, Up Air, Crinerang, and Gut Check. Similarly to being edge guarded, all these options are very punishable if predicted. Yes, even there, it's not a free landing option. It was a joke earlier. Probably. This game substate does come with the caveat of more options being able to be used more often, thanks to getting hit just resetting the situation instead of draining resources and or constraining Kinky Rule to very few options, like being edge guarded does. One thing to make note of is in order to reliably perform a fastfall air dodge with King K. Rule, he needs to expend his jump. The main reason for this is due to the fact that all of King K. Rule's aerials have a hefty amount of end lag, thus not giving him enough time to even try to air dodge after throwing out a move. So much like every other disadvantageous position, Mixing up timings and the options themselves is key to enable Kinky Rule to land safely and effectively. Before diving headfirst into the tech this character has to offer, I want to remind everyone that what is about to be shown should not be focused on slash attempted until the previous sections are understood and mastered in full. The tech builds a lot off of what has been shown and described prior, so you may feel lost if you opt to just skip to this section. I am also going to remind you all that this section only serves as a showcase and covers the surface level applications of such tech. 
Since this guide is going to be brief with King K. Rules Tech, I recommend looking into the advanced guide, once it's out anyway, where it'll break down all of the theory of the tech and what they all can do for King K. Rule in a typical match. With that being said, let's have a bit of a tease as to what a technical King K. Rule looks like. Let's begin by looking at the simpler tech K. Rule has. First on the list, we have his ability to drop through platforms during any frame of the animation of Blunderbuss. This technique can be easily executed by just pressing down as if one were to drop through a platform normally. This tech is typically used to mix up King K. Rool's ledge trap timings with the advent of a platform, and or in conjunction with the use of another tech, Vacuum Delay. Since this fact about this tech was mentioned in a previous section, Here's another tidbit about the technique. Did you know that Kinky Rule is able to perform aerials when dropping through platforms both more reliably and faster on average than every other character? This is thanks to the aforementioned ability to drop through platforms on any frame of the move, and that the drop through can be buffered, which normally is impossible for the majority of the cast. It still comes with the risk of the lag of the move itself, so don't try to make use of this quality too much else you'll likely receive a mighty punish from your opponent. Next, let's take a look at Blunder Bouncing. This is a technique where King K. Rule's vertical momentum is fully reversed when executing a buffered full-hopped Blunder Bus. This tech can be used to add yet another layer of ambiguity when ledge trapping, or juke out attempts at air to airs by the opponent. There is also some additional crafty ledge play that this tech provides, but this quality will only be elaborated on in the advanced guide. Now let's look at the last tech that Blunderbuss has to offer, Vacuum Delay. This is a technique that allows the vacuum of Blunderbuss to be delayed in a range of timings, depending on when the B button is pressed within the window that the suck can be executed. As previously stated, Vacuum Delay's main use is as a strong mix of tool for ledge trapping the opponent. This technique can also be used to catch haphazard out of shields when the move is slightly spaced on a blocking opponent. Now we're getting into techniques that are both more abstract and integral for higher levels of play. If you plan on becoming a competitive player, these techniques will be the utmost useful to you to know about and master. Starting off simple, Let's cover Crown Catch Cancelling. This is a technique that aims to avoid the minimum 17 frames of the pickup animation for the Crown of Crownerang. This can be done by performing actions that outprioritize the animation, then predominantly being attacks, to then safely catch back the crown. One especially useful action that outprioritizes the catching animation is the three frames of Jump Squat. This min-maxes both the safety and possible frame advantage after the potential landing of the oh-so-delicious returning head of Crownerang. Before we start getting really technical, let's take a look at Crown Footstool comboing. As the name suggests, Kinky will be footstooling the opponent after landing the returning head of Crownerang. This technique opens up a lot of 50-50s when an air dodge down is executed after the footstool. Platforms also extend the window where such 50-50s can be executed. There are instances where going for the 50-50 is more optimal than going for an aerial, but the specifics on this will only be described in the aforementioned advanced guide. Alright, now things are getting a bit complicated. Oh boy, here we go. Crown sliding and crown bouncing are techniques that aim to play with the pickup animation, rather than always against it, as one may assume, and its strange qualities, some of which are that of it being treated internally as if it were a special move, and that certain grounded options have their momentum conserved when they otherwise wouldn't for another character. Confused yet? Well, let's look at what this all means for King K. Roll. First, let's look at ground sliding. This technique allows King K. Rool to shift his momentum on the ground in 8 different ways, with each differing on the distance, facing direction, and of course, their execution. The same also goes for crown bouncing. It has 12 variants, by the way, with it essentially being an aerial version of crown sliding. 
If you are interested in learning how to execute both techniques, you have the option of waiting for the advanced guide, or looking at the spreadsheet document linked in the description. Crown sliding and crown bouncing enables King K. Roll to mix up his positioning, microspace, perform combos, and even pull off kill confirms. I think you can all start to see why these techniques are very valuable to King K. Roll. And we're not even done yet on what this Kremlin has to offer. Alright, the moment that you all have been waiting for. The reveal of a technique that has not yet been discovered by anyone! I call it... Crown Trumping. This is a technique that makes use of Crown Rank's property, where it will only loosely follow King Key Rule vertically when returning to him. When the positioning is right, this quality can be used to cover the area where a ledge trumped opponent is sent after being trumped, thus enabling guaranteed ledge trump punishes. Another way to use this technique is to use the coverage to instead force the opponent off the ledge, since the crown can also be influenced to hit a ledge hanging opponent if they are no longer invincible, of course. This allows King K. Rool to actually cover every option on a ledge hanging opponent, in combination with the use of Blunderbuss in the typical manner when ledge trapping. And people thought this character is brain dead. Please. I bet all you small brain individuals that saw K. Rool this way are sitting there speechless. And for the record, no. King K. Rool is not a bottom 10 character. I'm looking at you, E. Sam and Mars. There are other uses of the previously mentioned techniques, but such applications will have to wait for the advanced guide. Dun dun dun! Here is a little section I would like to call, Making King K. Rule Viable. King K. Rule is widely considered either a lower mid-tier or low-tier character on many top player tier lists. In order to make an astute judgment of what he needs fixing, a reiteration of his strengths and coverage of his weaknesses are in order. There are, however, a lot of underexplored techniques for both his own player base as well as possible counterplay for such strategies from the general player base. So, I will also be looking over the underrepresented strategies to see if there is enough there to even warrant a buff of some kind. I will also be trying to maintain the identity of the character, so no, I will not, as much as I would like to, be making him faster giving him a frame 1 nair. Yes, Smash Ultimate is widely acclaimed to be a very balanced game, but as time goes on, I can see the weaker perceived characters possibly fading into obscurity as the scale ceiling increases. If you are just skipping to the section to learn how to beat King K. Roll, I implore you to look back on their previous sections to inform yourself on what this character is capable of, and what to look out for. Knowing these things is important, if not more important than whether this character is weak in, since every character is going to try and use their character's tools to play around their flaws, making just knowing where a character is weak not enough to paint a full picture of the matchup. It will also help you to understand my decisions as to the buffs I think are necessary for King K. Rule. With that being said, let's make King K. Rule viable. King K. Rule is a mix between three styles of play, a trapper, a zoner, and a turtler. Many of his tools force interactions and or decisions from the opponent to then play into his strong walling capabilities when the opponent succumbs to the pressure. This character can be rather tricky for the opponent to get used to, with a plethora of armored moves and wacky techniques that he has, but such pronounced strengths are coupled with very polarizing weaknesses. Because of these weaknesses, it is not unheard of for at least some characters to steamroll after eventually getting in and landing a single stray hit. Let's take a look at the character's weaknesses in full to figure out what's keeping this king off of his throne. The weaknesses of King K. Rool can be categorized into three areas, the risk-reward of many of his options, the limited areas where some of his strongest options can be applied, and inconsistencies of the moves within his kit. King K. Rool is at his weakness design-wise when he is under shield pressure, being outcamped and are forced to approach, being comboed, and when he's sent off stage. King K. Rool's weak out of shield gain can be traced back to his lack of fast reliable out of shields. Sure, Nair is reliable and up smashes fast, but neither fill the role of both 
and that the two options are sizable commitments in practice, unlike what a good out of shield option typically does. To deal with this weakness a little bit better, Viable King K Will will have his Nair come out one frame faster. As made out of a change this may seem, this buff also gives King K Will a slightly easier time landing in addition to another option he can more reliably use as a sort of combo breaker. The Kremlin Monarch's weakness to being outzoned, as a character that has moves that typically serve as zone breaking options, is rooted into the commitment that a lot of the options that he has to deal with zoning have. King K. Roll does have a pretty solid burst range, but against characters that can either play around this range and or punish him hard for attempting to close the distance with his poor mobility, can negate a decent amount of the character's options to get around opposing walls. This is especially true against characters that can constantly pester K. Roll and be slippery about it. To combat this weakness, viable Kinky Roll will have Gut Check Cancel Bow when reflecting and that Crown Orang will no longer get the hitbox nullified when the opponent attempts to clank with it. These changes will substantially aid the Kremlin when trying to close the distance, but not too much due to the option still being fairly big commitments. These buffs only seek to make it so these options are reliable and are usable in some troublesome matchups. The last great weakness of Kinky Roll is stemmed from his girth. The added survivability is nice and all, but the trade-off of taking a lot of damage or sometimes even dying off of one mistake can be dreadful to work around. Not only does Kinky Roll take a lot of damage thanks to his thick attributes, he also doesn't have that great of a means from escaping being hit. This lack of a reliable escape option also makes Kiro more susceptible to being hit successively by normally non-true follow-ups. As a result, this weakness can lead to an even wider window for combos and kill confirms than the added weight causes alone. King K. Rule's recovery also takes a hefty hit from this, since not only is it fairly linear, he will also be sent there fairly often with the attained high damage leading to more and easier loops slash damage offstage, if it doesn't already kill him. To combat this weakness a bit, Viable King Kiro will have the end lag on his up air reduced, and the ledge grab boxes will be increased vertically, both above and below. These buffs would only make King Kiro a bit better at stalling off stage and above stage, thus possibly giving him enough time to get back to ledge in some situations, and it will make it so contesting King Kiro when he's going to ledge is more difficult. These buffs do not make King K. Rool's recovery good by any means, but it does make it so he doesn't just lose when sent far off stage, or is less likely to simply flat out not able to grab the ledge. Now let's take a look at King K. Rool's design flaws. I am defining a design flaw as either things that do not work as I think they are intended to function, or if the use of an option is unreliable. Some of these are up to interpretation, so feel free to take those with a grain of salt. There are a few moves in Kinky Rolls Kit that do not function as intended, at least I think so. These moves that have such an issue are Down Throw, Crown Ring, and Nair. Down Throw's problem is that it sometimes just fails to bury the opponent. This can occur in several ways, being Down Throw in a specific position, being grabbed a couple of frames after dropping through a platform, or if the opponent is down thrown successively too fast. There is a lot of specifics that goes into why this happens, so if you're curious to know what exactly is happening to cause this problem, a detailed explanation of it can be found in a video by Plague Von Karma that I'll be linking in the description. As you may have guessed, Viable King K. Roll will not have this issue anymore, with either the joint responsible for bearing the opponent being lowered, or the detection of a variable surface being increased. King Kiro's Crown Ring has the problem with the armor being inconsistent. The armor is percent base with it being 12%, but against multi-hits, or if Kiro is swiftly struck back to back with individual hits that don't deal more than 12% alone, the armor can still break. One may think that the damage is cumulative when hearing this, but there are multi-hit moves that exceed 12% and do not break the armor, and that changing the order of the moves to hit King K. Roll changes if they break the armor or not. 
This problem hurts King Kiro a lot in some matchups and limits his ability to work around his and the move's already existing weaknesses. So, viable King Kiro will have it so the armor is only broken if a single hit exceeds 12% and not whatever weird shenanigans is currally going on. Neutral Air's problem is that one of its uses is inconsistent, the use of which is as a landing option. No, I'm not talking about having health or that it's kinda slow. What I'm talking about is the fact that his feet poke out during the majority of the move's animation. This allows any and every character to be able to challenge King K. Rool from below if he throws out the move. As you may have guessed already, Viable King K. Rool have the hurt boxes on his feet become invincible during the entirety of the active frames of the move. The last few changes that will be made to King K. Rool are to have Forward Throw do slightly more hit stun, Forward Smash having more active frames than just two, Cranorang will have slightly less end lag, and of course, the pickup animation for Cranorang will be reduced to 14. These small adjustments are just to make some of the moves uses slightly more consistent and that against some characters they actually work consistently on them. And with those final changes, Viable King K. Rule is complete. Now, I know what you might be thinking, Smithers, how could this character not be bottom 10 with all of these issues? I thought you'd never ask. Tune into Smithers' livestream at twitch.tv slash dusmithers to see what the croc can offer with all of his tech. Also, shoutouts to Scrumpy. This is a bit based on the structure of his content on his channel, so if you like this kind of theory crafting for potential changes on characters, be sure to give his stuff a good watch. A link to his channel can be found in the description. To conclude this guide, I'm going to be showing my thoughts on King Kiro's potential. I'm going to conduct this by sharing my thoughts on a matchup chart, stage preference tier list, move set tier list, and finally King Kiro's placement on the overall tier list at large. Since this guide is very long already, I'm merely going to be showing the charts I made and only lightly covering their contents. Feel free to leave a comment on your own thoughts down below. I'm always eager to have a conversation with others about King K. Rool after all, so there's no reason to be afraid to share your opinions. Then again, this is the internet, so maybe not too sincere of opinions? Let's not get too carried away now. Let's start by looking at the moveset tier list. I order them based on the range of situations where they can be applied, and the risk reward each move yields. This, in turn, essentially ranks them on the frequency one would likely use such options in a match. If you want to better understand why I made these decisions, feel free to look at this while re-watching the moveset breakdown section. Now let's look at the stage preference tier list. The listing is ordered by how much they give King Kiro access to his strengths and how badly some can impair his ability to play to his typical game plan. To better understand my takes here, I recommend looking back at the Game States Breakdown section. Onto the next list, we have his matchup chart. I'm showing both my own and a community matchup chart that was voted on by the King K. Rule Discord. As you can probably tell, the one that has a more pessimistic approach is the community one, and the one with the plentiful amount of hot takes is my own. Now, I know it may look laughably bad, but do keep in mind that I am the one that conducted the bulk of the research and theory crafting of this character guide, and, dare I say it, very few people actually know how to play this character. Depending on how much attention this list may get, I can see myself making a video or a series of videos over this list alone, since I do have a lot to explain here, don't I? So if you're interested, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. What does Smithers think K rolls on the tier list? Right here. Sure, King Hero has a lot of wacky tech and other tricks up his sleeve, but his weak disadvantage is what keeps his character from moving any higher. 
if the character is buffed in the areas I recommended earlier in this video, I think they will only put Kiro at the lower end of high tier, or what I label it as just good tier in my own tier list. I could be wrong though, since I have yet to fully explore everything Kiro's tech can do at the time of me writing this. I'm also just some person that's on a collegiate team, so I suppose you could just ignore my opinion. This concludes everything I currently know about King K. Rule. I'm going to be continuing to experiment and practice with some of the time spent on this being streamed on my Twitch account. If you are interested to see the current meta developments for King K. Rule, feel free to follow the link in the description to find me and my live efforts on pushing the character to newfound heights. I'll also be linking my Discord and the King K. Rule Discord channels if you want to pop in on those as well. I also want to give a big thank you to the King K. Rule Discord and its staff, both new and old, for allocating a lot of information about the character and for reviewing the guide before it was released. Oh, one last thing. If you get some cool K. Rule clips thanks to this guide, feel free to at me on Twitter and I'll give it a like. And on that note, thank you for watching. If you found this guide helpful, be sure to give it a like and or subscribe to see projects from me in the future. Hopefully this guide helped you learn a little more about the obviously best character in Smash Ultimate. Keep in mind that no matter how much information you know about the character, the best way to learn is to practice on your own to gain valuable intuition. And apply what I've told you, of course. At the end of the day, this game is a children's party game, so don't take it too seriously. Get out there, throw some crowns, spike some noobs, and Tom Smithers sent you. You know how there are always effects that appear when a character performs a move? Kinky Rule's F-Tilt has a kind of shockwave looking thing when he claps, yeah? Well, if you angle it upwards specifically, the effect comes out one frame earlier for some reason. I need to go outside. <laughs>